Hey students, welcome to episode 22 of the Film Student Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Lazzaroni. My guest this week is Bethany Berg from the original Orange Cohort. We go way off topic on this one. Overscheduling yourself, Epcot Center, memory loss, not drinking beer in commercials, getting fired from crappy jobs. We cover it all and more. But enough of this. On with the show. I think I Googled comedy film schools, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I think I, like, I had just graduated from my undergrad, and I was like, well, I really like comedy film. Like, that's what I want to do. So I think I was like looking at grad schools, and I was like, well, I guess I'll either do English literature or like film. Mm -hmm. I wish I could just do comedy film. Like, I wish there was a place for that. And there's, and it, the, this is the only game. Yeah, <laughs> this is the only, and it was the first year. Yeah. It was like, this is the first year it's happening. And I was like, well, this is great this is perfect <laughs> it's so exactly what you want it's exactly what i want so i applied and i think i applied pretty last minute like you know the day of. that doesn't matter they, no. they review them after the fact that's true it's not it's not like so we've been told for some of the film festivals and stuff like that if you don't apply by the early submission deadline oh, really? then it's basically a waste of time because they've already programmed most of it by that point in time i didn't know that yeah that's apparently what jack says uh, uh is if you if you don't if you don't submit early then you might as well not submit at all because it's because a lot of them already have made their decisions oh. so there's probably you know the exceptions to the rule but that's why i haven't been getting into any festivals <laughs> It's That's not because my movie's bad. It's no. just because I haven't been doing it's the... because you're lazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they could both be true, honestly. <laughs> lazy and bad movie. Anyway. One one could beget the other. Uh, it's true. Bad maybe movies the, beget laziness maybe all the time. <laughs> the movie was bad because I'm lazy. Oh. Honestly, this is all coming together for oh. me. I should not be lazy. <laughs> I've, been, I've been pretty good about not being lazy. So but do you ever get in like lazy periods of your life? Yes. Where like you're like, wow, this past month has been a waste. <laughs> yeah, no, I my my thing is I'm I have to stay super busy, otherwise I get nothing done. Yeah, like when I was in college, I had three jobs and eighteen credit hours. Yeah, all at the same time while playing in a band and being in fraternity. Like, yeah, and like if, the busier you are, the more you get done. Yeah, because you're forced to. You yeah. have nothing. There is no downtime to mm -hmm. do anything else. Like I had to schedule video game time. Like if yeah. I wanted to play games, I had to have it on the schedule for it, and that's how I got stuff done. No, that's really smart. I I now even if I like have downtime and I'm like I'm gonna watch some Netflix, I'll like sit down and then, like, I it's better to schedule time because yeah. otherwise I'm like wait a minute it's 11 p.m. Time to Netflix go to bed. has made that so bad too because you I can know. just string together like I Clone Wars, the Star Wars cartoon is my latest oh, like addiction. I think oh my okay yeah I think uh, my brothers used to watch. That. I'm through like half of my old roommate like swore by it and I was yeah. like eh, I'll watch it at some point in time and I started watching last week or two weeks ago or something like is that. Is it good? So easy to binge. Don't like, tell four me if it's good because I will want to watch it. It's it's not amazing. Voltron's better out okay. of the cartoons that are on Netflix, but uh, but it's it's good. It's. I, I pay attention. Yeah. Okay. That that says something. I hmm. have that, you know, attention span of a gnat. Yeah. I mean, I point. do too. I also like, if I go on Netflix, it'll take me an hour to pick something out. Yeah. I'm like, what am I in the mood for? <laughs> I have to like really evaluate my mood. Do you get annoyed by just the the um, autoplay of like yes. the preview things? Oh, and they I just want to pause that. I just. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if, I wish you could like deactivate it. Yeah. Well, because the, also it kind of annoys me because they only do the real ones for their own like specials. Right. And then the other ones, it's just like happy music with like <laughs> <laughs> really depressing imagery. Like, oh, gosh. Uh, uh, there was a, a Morna Herzog one that I saw the other day that had like kind of like Sad. light piano music playing underneath it. I'm like, no, this does not fit with Warner Herzog. <laughs> I think I saw one once for like eyes wide shut. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this doesn't capture the mood of the movie. Just kind of jazzy, nice music. Jazzy. Tom Cruise looking at Nicole Kidman. You have no idea what's coming. That, I that's... just saw that movie for the first time this year. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And what'd you think? I liked it. I didn't like it that much. I don't really like Tom Cruise that much. Yeah. But I love Nicole Kidman. It's such a slow moving movie. It is really slow. I like had weird you, dreams after it too. Yeah. It you gets live in your in head. Moments and it's just slow camera pushes. I did like, so I read about it after I saw it and I read, I'm, and I might be mis like remembering this, but 
that uh, Kubrick did not want to shoot it in New York, but it's like takes place in New York. So they built New York sets in London. Oh. Is that right? <laughs> and like you can so tell, dumb. which I like, I but I love the look of it. I yeah. love that they're like, this is what New York is. <laughs> and it's like trash on the street, <laughs> fire hydrant. It's, like, it's a fake interpretation of what New York is. We were talking about yeah, that like today Epcot. in class. Like the the like uh, there was an actor that was playing a drunk character in one of the films that we were that we just shot. Yeah, and he purposefully was like over like playing a caricature of a drunk person as opposed Love to it. like an actual drunk person, and it was like yeah, uh, it kind of ruins it. It makes it tough. Like it's almost <laughs> like you're like acting like somebody acting like they're drunk. Yeah, yeah, but I love those types of things. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, well, like, again, like Epcot Center, like, I think it's so strange. Not that I've been to Epcot Center, but the concept of it. Okay. Like, where it's this like... Feels, this is a left turn for me. <laughs> where did Epcot Center... Wait, okay, okay, go back. I'm sorry, but like, okay, it's like, somebody's interpretation of it is not the real thing, but it's what they've seen of it. And it creates this weird, like... So if somebody's never been to London, but they're told to, like, create London. Oh, okay. You know, no. Yeah. Or, yeah. like, when somebody's like, I'm going to write, like, a doctor movie, but they've never been to a hospital, so they just write right. it based off doctor movies they've seen. Right. That's and how that's, I write. <laughs> they make fun of that in um, Catch Me If You Can. Oh, I love Catch Me If You Can. Uh, they make fun of it because he, he's watching the doctor shows to learn what doctors yeah. say. And so, do you concur? I, I concur. concur. Like, just digging so into that good. one and using that over and over again. Yeah. That was kind of, like, maybe that's not Epcot Center. But I just like the idea of, like, something that's gone through many layers of interpretation. It's like so that small world ride yeah. thing. Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's not a representation of any of those places it is a representation of stereotypes of all those right. places just right. strung together okay that's i bizarre. get that now it's making sense for me anyway sorry that's when you say epcot center my brain just goes to the to the big like circle dome for space mountain yeah and that's all that well and i've never been to epcot center for what? so even for me this is like my interpretation of epcot's interpretation <laughs> i i've never been i've never been to Disney it's a photocopy else. of a photocopy of a photocopy yeah it's as good as the original it's so great yeah. um yeah no i've never been there <laughs> I I'm not rich. <laughs> In my head, like it's just rich people that go to Disney World. Ugh, I've been a couple of times. One time was with with uh, high school class for. Oh yeah, uh, that a high school field trip to Disney World. It was a high school field trip to a youth orchestra competition that was oh. right like right down the road in Celebration, Florida from from uh, Orlando, it. and so like one of our downtime days. Like I've got photos of. Me and a bunch of my high school friends. Me wearing a before they were cool Hawaiian shirt and um, really bad facial hair. Maybe you made it cool. Maybe that was the picture. Yeah, I abandoned Somebody it before saw it, it they got were cool. Like, I wanted to go dig that stuff up because now that stuff would actually be like good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there's stuff from like the 2000s that I used to wear that now if I wore them, people would be like, oh my gosh, she's so like cool. Like she's butterfly, so like butterfly clips. Yeah. If I like dug those up, I'm sure. Is that a thing now? No, I bet it could be. <laughs> like Just I recycle your old, old wardrobe and turn yeah. it into... I'm sure it'll come back in style. <laughs> I used to wear a lot of headbands. I wore uniforms, though. I went to a school with uniforms. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So that your, that's your high school? No, that was my grade school. Grade school? Yeah. yeah. Did you... Or, so... Going back, sort of on topic. Um, so, did you? No, we don't have to do. That. <laughs> did you? Off. Did you make any any movie stuff before coming here, or was this your oh, first yeah. foray into it? No, I think the first like movie thing I made. Um, I made a lot of well, I didn't make a ton of stuff as a kid, but we used to make this like thing called like it was like reptile. What did we call it? It was like Crocodile Dundee. And we would just go around my house, like find like we had this rocking horse. We'd be like, "Crikey, there's a rocking horse!" And like, and we would like wrap toilet paper around it, so it was like a mummy horse. Yeah, just shooting this. We on, just like, did stuff like that. Uh, on, like the handy cam or, or yeah, my phones parents or like something like that. Camera, but like it wasn't. We just did it every once in a while. Yeah. It wasn't like an active hobby. It'd be like we were bored in the summer and you weren't like, editing the stuff together no. into a super cut or something. I don't like that. think we ever watched it. I think we just <laughs> shot it and we're like, "That was fun," and then like moved on. We we did that one time. We had this uh, um, thing. I guess it was right after like Robot Chicken had come out, and we uh, were yeah. we made um, uh, we found these like little McDonald's toys of like Goofy and stuff like that. And we st invented this whole story where Goofy's going through a nightclub, uh, and so we've got like fake. That's so great! It's it's ridiculous. It's so dumb, but it was me and my friend and his little brother, the three of us doing it. But that's just a good time. My brothers would do that too with their Legos. They would like yeah. make. 
um, like stop motion movies with their Legos. Yeah. Very bad as well. Because the light widows changed. They weren't like they didn't have a tribe. But it was very jumpy. But precursor to the Lego movie. Yeah. They were really ahead of their time. Yeah. I mean, I think that they were playing Lego video games. Mm -hmm. I think that's where it came from. Yeah. Like they would play Lego Star Wars, which are very funny. Yeah. I think. Those are. Uh, yeah. I wasn't allowed to play it with them, but I would watch it from a corner. Why? I don't know. They just didn't want me to play it with them. I was a girl. Oh, you weren't allowed by them. <laughs> by not them. By, not no, by my parents, parents didn't give a shit about anything. <laughs> she can't play with Lego. You're not She's allowed. a girl. You're a girl. <laughs> Go play with your dolls and your bows and your ribbons. Twirl, twirl. No, they didn't care. My <laughs> brothers didn't want me to play with me. Okay. Like, sometimes I'd ask and then I'd be bad at it because I'd never played before. Yeah. And then they'd be like, you're bad at this. It's but like, we did I play. no time to practice. <laughs> we did play. Um. The sly games together the raccoon game do you know that the you know no is he's like this cartoon raccoon that like steals stuff what yeah it was so much fun it's like a computer game yeah or? He, it was like a video game and he had like this pink hippo that was his friend <laughs> and like a turtle i don't know are you sure this time. was something and not nothing? i might have dreamed it <laughs> <laughs> look it's very possible that i hallucinated my entire childhood that's that's true but I know I've, this is real. I've wondered that at times because so, so many things from from childhood can feel very spotty as far as specific memories go. Right. Like I hear people tell like very vivid memories from their childhood. I'm like, I have none of those. Like I I, yeah. I can remember bits and pieces of little things. It comes things. in spurts. Yeah, and, and it's then some, you it have takes to a wonder. trigger. You have to wonder if something horrible happened. Yeah, <laughs> and like you're just repressing everything. <laughs> like yeah. I hit my head at some point in time when I was in high school, and it, yeah. it just erased like fourth grade i mean it's very possible <laughs> there there's definitely like parts of my life where like i actually just don't think about them yeah and i don't remember them that well and yeah. i'm wondering if it's like some sort of like survival coping thing. <laughs> not that it was like <laughs> bad but there's some know. sort of ptsd that's like yeah. restricting that memory from from being present yeah i'm sure i think it's probably because it was so boring <laughs> like, that's probably it it's like there was nothing exciting to remember <laughs> you know <laughs> All right, oh, so you know. so you made the the little little movies. What what did you actually make something that was like edited before? I before mean, yeah, yeah, or? yeah. So then the first thing I edited was on iMovie with my brothers, mm -hmm. and it was called the soccer ball that got revenge. Okay. And this kid kicks a soccer ball, and he laughs at it, and then the soccer ball <laughs> flies back and hits him in the face <laughs> and knocks him out. And we edited, it and we were like, "Oh, that's so funny!" Like <laughs> we were so into it. And it was dumb. Yeah. Of course. Does it still exist someplace? Do you yeah, know where I'm this sure video somewhere. is? Yeah, but it's on my parents' computer still. Okay. And then the, the first... kind of thing that should go online somewhere and just be yeah. like, this was the beginning. This was the beginning of a career that hasn't begun. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, and then I, uh, I, the first like real thing I kind of made was in my creative tech class when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. I was a senior. And creative I made a mock. Tech. Creative tech. It was... The first, like, they just started offering it. That's cool. It was cool. It was like you learned uh, iMovie and you learned Photoshop, kind of. Oh, I don't that's know. That's awesome. Yeah, it was we cool. didn't have I didn't have anything like that until I got to college. That and they, that was still new even in college at that yeah. point in time. Well, and I think the only reason they had it was they had like a hip young like teacher who had just come in and he was like, "I'm going to teach these kids." I know software. Yeah, and he was like, "Can I teach this?" And they were like, "Go ahead." <laughs> I had, a, I had a, a computer programming teacher that was the chemistry teacher who barely knew anything about C++ yeah. and was teaching it. Yeah. Yeah. That was my school. Like, well, it was a religious school. So he also taught like theology and like creative <laughs> tech and probably gym, theology I and know. iMovie. That's a, it's a very <laughs> the odd. Two, two passions. <laughs> it's a very odd. Missouri and Lutheranism and <laughs> iMovie. But so, so you made something uh, in that class? Yeah. I made like this mockumentary about my school. It was like a final project and it like kind of became a hit around the school like really? people really liked it yeah i'm not i feel like maybe somebody will hear this and be like we hated it <laughs> like it was dumb but i think people really like like they would, sh they would show it in class and i remember it got like a thousand hits and yeah it's like holy shit like a thousand hits you're a big deal um and <clears throat> yeah i i think that was kind of where i was like oh this is fun mm-hmm did and you do um, it through college or yeah and then i kept making stuff in college okay i made like this thing for my sophomore year, I made something for uh, orientation mm -hmm. called the handbook and you. And it was like this thing that like talked about like the handbook 
and the rules in it, but it was funny. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I like it was and it was like a 1950s educational video. Okay. And then what else did I I guess static camera angle somebody the, walks on camera looks at the camera yeah, and says something. Yeah, stuff like that. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, like and it was very much like Judy wanted to go out and party. But <laughs> Judy didn't realize that that's not allowed on campus. Yeah, stuff like that. With and that like voice. there's and <laughs> I think I also kind of got in trouble because I made drinking look really fun in this. <laughs> 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 like it was like Judy went out to party, but it's like this montage of her just having a blast. <laughs> like Judy's having a great time. And then she gets in trouble for having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that was fun. It's and because then. it's because you get to show people drinking. Yeah. I, Cause I, I learned this, I did a, it's like a, a project for, um, um, Sam Adams. Yeah. Uh it was like a spec video Sam project Adams, thing. The, the beer. beer. Yeah, oh. it was it was this online channel that you could go submit video ideas for big name brands and they, yeah. they would buy some of them. Um uh, but I got one where they actually tapped me and like sent me a bunch of like Sam oh, Adams glasses nice. and wanted wanted to shoot something. Um uh, but you can't in beer ads in the US in most states, I don't know if it's everywhere, uh you can't actually show anybody drinking. <laughs> I it's, didn't know that. That's so yeah, funny. Yeah, if you watch uh, now, I watch beer ads and I crack up because in every single one of them, every just doofus it's just holding like a hot girl holding beer. holding beer. Yeah, that's all they do. <laughs> it's it, it's a bunch of people holding beer, and that's 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 why I'm like and that's laughing. why they're that's why they're obsessed with like the coldness of things is yeah. because like there's no other sensation, like, single, not the taste, like, trickle. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But it's uh, yeah, nobody's you can't they can't be drinking. But then you could go straight into the. Um, you know, family family sitcom where the dad goes and gets a beer out and just takes yeah. a sip immediately. Like that's that crazy. that's allowed. <laughs> wow, so that's why you were you were able to uh, to break through the I way was that able the beer to break ambl- through the mold, and I didn't even realize I was doing it. Yeah, wow, and that's feminism. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is feminism. That's that feminism. that's the dictionary definition of feminism. That whole uh, that whole yeah. put together. No, but uh, yeah, it was like a montage of her drinking, and <laughs> they were like laughing. <laughs> And yeah. we weren't we weren't allowed to have alcohol on campus. So we just like this was a this was one of those things where it was like the production, you know, had uh, like sp- things we had to like break past. Yeah, and yeah. so we in order to do it, we like use comedy. So we just like took mugs and put tape on them and wrote like booze. <laughs> so they were drinking out of mugs. I <laughs> just said like booze on them. <laughs> and like acting plastered. It's very funny. <laughs> Drinking it out of mugs too. Yeah. Well, we didn't have. We weren't allowed to have like glasses like on campus either. <laughs> like we couldn't. We couldn't bring beer bottles on campus. Oh. Later on, when I like had turned twenty one, I did drink on campus. Yeah. I did before I was twenty one. <laughs> we had a we had a uh, um, world regions <laughs> class with a, a teacher that uh, he would do these night these film screenings at night. Yeah. And it was great because you it was giant uh like uh, auditorium classroom thing that he that he taught it in McBride yeah. one hundred in, in uh at Virginia Tech and he um he he even sort of half ass endorsed like bringing your own drinks like yeah because he would you go all right money. <laughs> all right everybody everybody uh sit sit back and enjoy you know Itu Mama Tambia and like or some oh, you know some it. other foreign film or something like that and he would put it on and as soon as the lights went out. Ch- 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 yeah, all the beers open. Tall boys, <laughs> cracking them open. I did that once at a screening here. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I did that too. I think Terrence was having a screening, and that was where we were like, Terrence doesn't give a shit. So we just came and like we all like went to the gas station and got like tall boys. <laughs> I think I did it for the blue screening. They did they did one where Dax like screened uh, all the blue films. Oh, I uh, love it. And, and final films that I just yeah went yeah. And you just, one. They really don't care. I think the first day we came here, we watched. Uh, Sullivan's Travels. Yeah. And Erica was in the front, just like drinking a glass of white wine. And I was like, oh, I'm going to love this place. (laughs) Are you kidding me? We'll we'll go ahead and say that's not an official endorsement in any way, shape, or form of those things. But no, no, I mean, yeah. Uh, um, We both done it. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Now now I feel like I can, especially now that I'm not a student, I feel like I can come anywhere. I I did that at Gary. Gary was screening It Happened One Night. One Night. (laughs) One night he was screening that. And, it um, happened one night. Was the movie? It happened was one night. Was the one movie? Night. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I didn't like. I was just around here, like meeting with somebody, and like I just got done, and Gary was like screening something. I was like, "Oh, what are you screening?" And he told me, and I was like, "That's like one of my favorite movies." So I just bought a beer and I sat it with everybody. I was like, "Hey, everybody, 
I don't go here this. anymore. <laughs> I'm going to watch this with you. I feel like that's a common thing as far as like, there's a lot of alumni just kind of hanging out. Oh, yeah. And, Me, and I am the most guilty of that at this point in time. You're, yeah, you're up there. There's, well, it's because I'm working few, on this though. movie with Bria. Yeah, that helps. I think uh, that's the main reason. But like, and John's all around all the time. John, John Barnes? Barnes? Is, yeah, he's, he's around. John a, a Barnes. Good, <laughs> he's my just roommate. had a meeting with him earlier today. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, um, for the for shoot Jeff's, this weekend. Yeah, Jeff's yeah. shoot. Because he, he's Aideen. Mm-hmm. Hey, I look. He's doing a great job with that, mm-hmm. John Barnes. I'll say that. And uh, you're you're on top of all the hot gossip here. Well, <laughs> I am. I'm just saying. Like, I see him at my apartment working on it. He's yeah. working hard. Yeah. Yeah. He's really cra- putting in the hours. The dude. The dude is. He's dedicated. Yeah, he is. Which he's and just other, a hell of a guy. The other social media person. Yeah, the other social <laughs> I media person. You two are roommates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Both he was doing them. it before because I used to work at Guaranteed Rate. And I didn't have time to do anything. Yeah. And then now I have lots of free time because I got fired. Because <laughs> the hell with that job. Yeah, to hell. Th- I just met with one of my old coworkers yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Was and it like a crappy place to work? Or Oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, it got better. The thing is that like it did get better in the end. Like there was two weeks where it was good. Mm-hmm. And then I got fired mm-hmm. after those two weeks. Because your cohort was one of the ones back when you had day jobs and then um, the night or, or were no, you we were like before the we did not have day jobs i just worked part-time okay. like on the days that i didn't but your have. classes were during the day or during the they evening? were during the day during nine the to day. four oh, okay nine so to yeah four, baby so you got and the no same weekends. thing we did yeah we got monday wednesday friday because like the first couple cohorts were or, or something that like, were night classes yeah that was like blue or purple I think both right? uh, might have been both of them together yeah i think people well i think that they specifically asked for that I might be wrong. That could be wrong. I and should then, have just and said then that. They apparently all hated it from what I understand. Well, I think that maybe also people from our cohort said that they would have. No, I'm, I'm just saying things now. I'm I, just trying to think of why they would have done that. Well, they listened to a, to a lot of student feedback. I mean, yeah. that's it very well could have been, you know, saying that the, it was tough to try and. Yeah. I don't know who in my class time. had day jobs, though. Yeah. I don't think anybody. Hmm. We all either were like part time or like waitressing. Yeah. I don't know. That's kind of what you have to do. It's whatever job yeah. you can scrape together in the downtime yeah. around this. Right, right. I mean, or, I'm really lucky that I found the job I did. Yeah. They were just like, come in whenever. And I was like, oh, sick. <laughs> they also didn't really like me. <laughs> I don't know. So so you you mentioned you're working on Bria's... Uh, uh, and Bria Schultz is on her uh, her final film. Yeah. Um, what's... Uh, you, do you want to kind of... Quick plug pitch it? on that pl- <laughs> quick pitch plug yeah. although it's not done yet so it's you can't really see it yeah. anymore just yet i mean nobody can see it but it's coming don't worry it's, okay we haven't actually started editing yet that's i've right. like started syncing sound you which don't i have hate all the, yeah i hate syncing sound pluralize get a copy anyway, of pluralize i should get how much does pluralize cost uh 200 if can't you buy it. it if you buy can't. it outright <laughs> But they do deals all the time where you can get it for like ninety nine or something like that. Oh, and then it's like a permanent it. license. All right. I don't know. I just, I just dropped two hundred dollars on a bridesmaid dress. I can't afford to. I buy. think they also have a free trial too. That's so dangerous though. I edited something on a free trial once, and then it expired, and I lost the entire project. A lot and of that was my final film for Orange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously? <laughs> yeah. You lost the. Well, it I deletes have, the project, or yeah, I mean. Ugh, it's a whole thing. I don't really want to talk about it. I'll start crying. <laughs> <laughs> I have the file. Yeah. And I could, I suppose, either re-edit the entire thing or drag the file in and just work off that. Okay. But I don't have the working file. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry it's okay. to make you, you it's okay. traipse through. Uh, Look, if anybody's listening who funded me for that Kickstarter, it, this is why. I lost the file. <laughs> And now I'm just mourning that project. Uh-oh. It's okay. It was good, though, I thought. Anyway, what was your question? <laughs> oh, tassels. <laughs> the thing I'm working yeah, on. Yeah, if you now. want to talk about the, the thing that's less painful that you're currently working on. Is it less painful? I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I'm not I'm not. You seem to be having fun with it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's about... Okay. Um, <laughs> it's about a girl named Anna who her best friend is getting married they've been best friends for a long time it's kind of a strained relationship and she has these other friends who for the bachelorette party want to have a burlesque lesson Mm -hmm. thing and she's like no way i can't do that that's not me i can't do burlesque which i related to because if somebody told me to do burlesque i would (laughs) 
can run the opposite way. Yeah. I'm like, I can't do that. Um, so she decides to like take lessons in secret beforehand. <laughs> to prepare for the to lessons. To prepare for the lessons. <laughs> um, and then she kind of discovers this magical world that she didn't know existed and like makes new friends. Yeah. And uh, kind of discovers herself. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I got to see the, the one of the key points because I was an extra for it yeah. and and saw like her one of her big realization in that. In yeah, that. the one where she's like, "If your friends think you're a disaster, they're shitty friends." And she's like, "What?" <laughs> there's that, and then there's the there's the other one of oh. of, um, of uh, uh, you don't. This isn't something else that you do. It's, this is where you. This she, is what you do. Yeah, she says like, "I wanted to do burlesque because I'm." Like my friends think I'm a disaster. I'm starting to think I'm a disaster, and I I just kind of wanted to be somebody else for a little bit. And yeah. then she's like, "Oh well, that's not why you do burlesque. Like you do it to become yourself more. Yeah. Like it's not." So that was yeah. We added that like at the end. Yeah, <laughs> that was Which like is, a final edit. But it's still good. Yeah, like it's it's thanks. a it's a great line. Oh, that's, thanks. Uh, it was one that I've heard like eight times standing in the back. I think probably but, more now. It's mm. probably like fifty times. We've but heard. it it hits. It's a good one. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Well I, there's there. lines like that. I'm like, is it too on the nose? But like for a short, sometimes you have to be on the nose. A little bit, yeah. Because yeah. you, you kind of have to browbeat people in certain ways. Yeah. I mean, you can you can let them discover something. But the nice thing is to get it. Get it while you're filming, mm -hmm. edit it together with with or without, and yeah. see and see, see, see how audiences respond. Because more often than not, your audience is smarter than you give them credit for. That's what I keep saying. Like when we were we we kept running into this problem when because we did like 25 drafts, like so yeah. many drafts, and um, I was you, it's like hard because you want to find a point where like you can say these things naturally in dialogue, mm -hmm. but you are like getting the theme across in a short amount of time. Yeah, like and how do you do that? And it's just like messing with dialogue yeah half the time and uh, now i've started to do this thing where i like take a scene and i rehearse it with my actors and mm -hmm. i let them change the dialogue yeah so i'll just be like how does this feel like this is where we're in the script what else could we say right and that ends up working right more than not well yeah. and that was one of the cool things that i've gotten out of um uh rachel's class from mm -hmm. term one uh when we go through and we're, we're talking about um uh shakespeare and yeah. I had I had never really had an appreciation for Shakespeare until her class yeah. from the standpoint of there's no scene directions in Shakespeare plays. Yeah. I mean, there, there's the very minimal one right at the top just Except, to explain who people yeah. are. But that's it. Uh, and, and Pursued by Bear is a big one, right? What's that? Pursued by Bear. Exit Pursued, Pursued by, by Bear. Bear. Right. From A Winter's Tale. Maybe. I haven't, I haven't seen <laughs> uh, I haven't seen that. <laughs> never one. mind. Forget I said that. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's like, that's a one stage direction that's like kind of famous because it's ridiculous. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just exit pursued by bear. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, like generally speaking for Taming of the Shrew, which is what we read, like it's, yeah. there's, there's no scene direction. Everything is just from like pulled from the dialogue. So mm -hmm. that's why you can go see the same play put up by 10 different Shakespearean companies and get 10 completely different interpretations yeah. of the physicalities and everything else that's going on in those scenes and the power dynamics and all that, because it can be projected in so many different ways yeah. uh, and, and, you know, fucked with to, to get all sorts of different responses out of people. And yeah. that, that's like, that was an interesting point of being like, all right, stop scene directing the hell out of everything that you write and try and put as much of the, inflection in the actual writing right like if you can get the dialogue to say to get to the point where somebody's like well why would i say this oh it's because i'm throwing <laughs> this thing at her yeah. instead of saying you know throws thing it, whatever it is it's right. i don't know why i went and throw something at her but <laughs> i mean if, go ahead i'm right here <laughs> throw something at me um no and i think a lot of that too is like the actors that you're working with mm -hmm. like i i think that you have to take that into consideration with everything like, I've changed so many characters. If I get an actor, I'll change the entire character around that actor. Yeah. Because if it doesn't feel natural coming out of them, nobody's going to believe it. Yeah. Table so, reads are awesome. Yeah. Just to, to be able to get that, Truly. that yeah. run through and see how somebody's going to adapt a character. Because it is. It's an adaptation. It's an mm -hmm. adaptation of what you wrote. Nobody ever says it the exact same way that it comes out of your head. No. Which sometimes, doesn't that kill you a little bit? You're like, that's ex like I wanted it to be said this way. It but can, but that's where casting comes into play. Right. Like, that's why that's the line you use for auditions. And see I who love says it. auditions. Like, that, I've had, like, moments where I'm like, this isn't going to work. The script isn't going to work. Nothing's going to work. And then I, like, get into auditions and I'm like, oh, we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, these people are killing it. Yeah. I don't know. I love actors. I can't. Like, I... 
am so confused at how they do what they do. Yeah. And um, did your class have the same like handful of actors that you used for? Yeah. Ninety percent of stuff. And we all use each other as well. Yeah, that yeah. too. Like, Although there were you know encouraged to to go to the outside community i think we're the reason for that <laughs> oh well, did you use well, way we used too much each other a lot not for our final films that much but yeah. like in in class exercises because we would all procrastinate so you almost be like, have to yeah it's it's not even just procrastination because like the other annoying one is like we have to do the, the shoots during the the class day yeah and uh, and the, that's in this term it's shooting it in last term that we weren't even filming anything so you'd yeah. be asking actors hey can you come in at 9 a.m on a wednesday right. uh to work for three hours and have nothing to turn around and use for a reel yeah. or anything like and that then it's like, like why would you want to be in somebody's like film exercise like it's not going to look good you're yeah. not going to be able to use that in anything yeah. sorry um if any actors are listening to this please be in here uh, we just wa- we did just watch some today and there's there's one guy who i've i've directed him i've seen him perform in other stuff knock down drag out the best performance i've seen him uh do was in was pretending to do a barbershop scene yeah uh in like room 203 like and and but he's excellent like i'm i would be like put that on your reel like yeah. just to, if nothing else there's so many actors i see here like in other people's stuff and i'm always like oh i want to use them i want to use them like even if it's just an audition and they're not right for the part yeah. i'm like oh but i want to use you in something else yeah and then it makes me upset because i generally don't have enough like resources to like make enough stuff Another for thing. all the actors that I want to work with. Yeah. Like I've, I'll email actors and I'll be like, I saw your audition. I loved you. It was so good. Like yeah. I want to work with you in the future. And they're like, that's so sweet. And then I, nothing ever comes of it. I do that with the technical people. Like when oh, I see yeah. somebody who's like cinematography is ridiculous. Ugh, it's so also cinematographers I'm in awe of. Yeah. Yeah. If you can make something look good, I'm like, how? I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. What sort of magic is what this? What kind of magic are you doing? Like Bridie? Ugh. Have you seen her stuff? It's gorgeous. So good. She is ridiculous at color. And, yeah. And and so you realize how how important that is when you because if you've ever seen any of her raw footage, it mm-hmm. looks a lot like what everybody else here sort yeah. of produces. I mean, she's got generally pretty good composition, better than average. But yeah. when she adds the color in there, it just becomes. Pro, Magic. like instant she pro. did the behind the scenes for that day that you were on set or yeah. the day before and she just gave them to us she's like oh here's behind the scenes and i was expecting like snapshots of like whatever and they were beautiful works of art yeah <laughs> like she gave us these photographs and i was like bridey this is amazing like you should be showing these in a gallery <laughs> they are beautiful so i don't know but well, uh, it's, it was fun lighting in there with the because i got yeah. a bunch on my phone and stuff like That's that too right. that, that was those were because really I got Bridie in a photo, the album cover shot, her and Zach. Oh yeah, oh that was such a good picture. Where she, just, I'm like Bridie, look away from the camera. She just stares straight into the camera. Like, <laughs> Works. This is why. This is why your screen name is Cut the Shit Hicks. Also, <laughs> also your uh, role as an extra is like you helped with that wipe transition, which would be in the movie. I was so I excited to, to edit that's that. That's my shoulder. That's Tony's that is shoulder. my shoulder. Tony's the star. No, I went home. I edited that immediately. I was like, I want to see how this wipe. I saw that. Up. I saw it's that you so posted that that clip. Cool. It, it looked good. Yeah, and it's just because Zach's being a little goober. Uh, yeah, but I also <laughs> like love those dumb. I was calling. It, I kept calling it a Jaws wipe because you know in Jaws when it like keeps wiping and then it yeah. like wipe. Yeah, and I kept telling Bria that, and she did not understand what I. <laughs> or what else what, i don't remember what everything i call it but then eventually when i showed it to her she was like oh yeah it's okay. like an object wipe i've done yeah. it in, i did it in a film one time where we had a car drive by and that mm-hmm. that blacks out the film yeah it's so cool and i just did it like frame by frame to track track the uh, mm-hmm. back edge of the car as it i went did through. it totally practically i didn't like do any masking or anything yeah well yeah. and that's because yeah it's dark enough in that space yeah. Yeah, yeah you can get away with it yeah it worked and um i like well i was making the shot list for that day and it was just all like so classic coverage it was like medium shot like two shot close up close up Ugh. and i was like i need to do something weird yeah <laughs> or i'm gonna go crazy <laughs> <laughs> so i wrote that one in nice and yeah it was fun so what are you working on anything else now or is that the the only project at the moment um am i working on anything else yes i am i'm working on a lot of other people's sets mm-hmm. Um, right now I'm mainly, I just got done with that second city works Tiffany shoot. I saw images from that. Like they were shooting on like a, a red with like cooked glass, like yeah. really, really nice stuff. But yeah. what, what was that for? It was like Tiffany's corporation was having like this, 
uh, tr- like team building exercise. Mm-hmm. And so to do that, they like the second city works, like had them all like come up with a like short idea and like shoot it in front of a green screen. And so it was yeah. Tiffany's staff that was yeah. coming up with like those corporate things. staff, like fancy corporate people. <laughs> I was so uncomfortable around them. Interesting. Yeah, so they you, were, you were just there as like a cog in the wheel to execute their yeah, their idea, their vision. Interesting. Their vision. Yeah, I didn't really know. Like, I kind of had an idea of what it was beforehand, and they like the night before gave us a call sheet with a lot more information. Mm-hmm. But it still was kind of like I think I know what we're doing. And then we got there, and I was like, oh, okay. But um, hmm. yeah, it was it was very interesting. We it was me and who was all in my room? Me and Matt and Mitchell. Mm-hmm. And we like kind of had to also tell them how to like run a film set. Yeah. Which was hard because yeah. I was like, okay, this is a slate. Um, this is why it's important. It's not actually important because the sound is already synced, but like yeah. we're going to do it anyway. And, it, um, it does. It I've, I've grown an appreciation for slate while being here that it is nice for organization later. When oh you go yeah. Add it. Oh, if if it's slate. used right, if yes. it's not used right, it's yeah, it's, it's worthless. Yes. And there was a few moments like, and this is my fault, but I got pretty lazy with the slate, mm-hmm. like on a few shoots of tassels where we're like, I didn't put a like flashlight on it. And so you can't really see it. And I was like, Oh, that's fine. It's but gosh, there. when I'm sick of sound, it's going to be such a, a bitch. But yeah. I, I think most of the ones, as long as you get the clap, that's all that matters. Yeah. And I think the main, ones that we did that on like i was like we don't need sound so it doesn't matter yeah because <laughs> there's a few we're not going to be using sound on. yeah i don't know hmm. anyway well so what's the what's the long-term goal with this what do you the tassels with uh yeah, the ta- well tassels but also just you in this industry in general mm. Mm. <laughs> um no i i know uh <laughs> tassels i think we want to put it in festivals i think yeah. we want to try to get in festivals cool um i think we can We'll see. I didn't. We'll see how it turns out. Yeah. Um. It's a unique story. I can't. Is it? Point to. Yeah. I can't point to any. I mean, that specific angle on Sorry, it. I didn't mean to like question the like uniqueness of the story that no, I'm hoping to. No. No. I mean, I don't. I can't think of like another like burlesque self discovery movie. Uh, I can think of self discovery movies. There's many. But this is this is unique. And what I found because we did a film a few years back that was mm-hmm. about Dungeons and Dragons players. Oh, I love that. And um, and what we found is that first off, the pu- public in general got it. Like there's yeah. jokes and stuff in there. But the people that play Dungeons and Dragons got it on like a deeper they level really and like it. fanboyed for it. So we've got we got that into one festival and it was at a comic convention. Good. Like uh, yeah, of you course. Know. But it's it's like that's. You, if you can find an audience by mm-hmm. it, it's going that that universe universality through super specificity it's yeah. that same idea well and the again. burlesque community has been so great with yeah helping, i can imagine helping out like red hot annie were you the day there the day mm-hmm. she was there oh she's like a big deal in the burlesque chicago scene oh yeah yeah and, and she, she's in the film she's in that she's opening the film nice yeah so we were that was a big get we were really excited that she was and like even some of our um like members of the troupe or like extras are part of the burlesque community Mm -hmm. and they've been like especially with like choreography like there's this one girl who she helped she she was like i don't want to step on any toes but like can i help choreograph and i was like oh my gosh yes like please yeah i don't know anything about it like anything that we're getting from that community is so appreciated Mm -hmm. they're 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 great and they're all like excited for it too which helps us because, you know, sometimes you get people that don't care right, <laughs> about right, your right. movie, on your movie. But they're all, like, very excited about it because they're part of the that's community. why I think you're going to see then on the other side when you go to actually show it in front of yeah. audiences, you're going to find that niche audience mm-hmm. that is going to be adamant about it. Yeah, um, I hope so. Uh, don't think twice. Improvisers. Yeah. Oh, that movie is imp- too sad. I love that movie. I actually never finished it. Cause what? Yeah. Well, now I'm good. Yeah, I watched it and I was like, oh, I can't. Like, I can't. I can't. Where did you where did you uh, bail out? Like the beginning, like when she misses the audition for SNL. I was like, this is going to be a sad story. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Oh. Yeah. Why does it get better? Yeah. I mean, okay. it's it I like Mike Birbiglia. It goes both directions. Like okay. it, it it does it does get heavier, it also gets a lot lighter, but yeah. everybody kind of finds their way. Okay. Um, I also get like this is such a horrible thing to say. I get really like sick of improv. <laughs> <laughs> like really sick of it yeah sorry that's all right anyway 
<laughs> hot take. <laughs> you're, you're allowed to get sick of improv. That's I just like I can I can't watch bad improv anymore. Oh yeah. I mean, I've never really been an improviser. I did it in college, mm-hmm. but and then I did it here when I went to film school, and then I was like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> never then, again. Not again. Not that I'm like bad in it. It's just like, yeah. I don't know. I once you have a taste of what good improv is like, yeah, the bad stuff is that it's much hard more painful to, watch. to go watch. Yeah, and then I mean, when you're in an improv class, you're just watching bad improv because <laughs> it's just yeah. yeah, yeah. You're you're waiting for your classmates to to come up with something brilliant. Well, and, and I know that I'm not doing anything good either. Like I'm not helping, <laughs> so it's just like a struggle. I think it's fun when you're just like messing around with friends. Yeah. Then then improv's fun. Yeah. And when you're just doing bits. Well, people. yeah, I mean, me and like some of my classmates used to like have prof time where we would just like go in the classroom and just do like bad improv. Like we would do bad improv on purpose. Oh, and shit that prof. was fun. Yeah. That we uh one of my troops we did that as a warm up. Yeah. We would do shit prof. It's you purposely yeah. go out and do all the things you're not supposed to do in a scene. But then you're just having a good time. Yeah. And I that I always thought that was fun. But we all know why we're having a good time. It's because it's bad. And there's no pressure to be good. You're not supposed to go out there and just ask a series of questions <laughs> to all the other be characters. Like, no, or, but. Yeah. No, no but, but everything we're that everyone else says. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. And I, I I can't I have to stop saying that I don't like improv in this community because I get You can say that. Especially at Second City where improv is not as big as I I expected when I came. Is it not? What's big here? Sketch. Oh, it's, yeah. It, and so the, the, their process is like an improv to sketch process. Sure. But, it, you know, like I went and saw a main stage show. I'll be it's honest. The, 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 it was, it's uh, two acts are sketched. The third act's improvised. And the third act, eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wasn't amazing. The sketch stuff was fantastic. Like mm-hmm. it, that was worth the, the price of the ticket alone. But the uh, but yeah, the, the improv part, yeah. You know, that's more IO and annoyance yeah. and CIC and you know, the other see, theaters in town. I used to see like three three peat at IO. Yeah, they were really good. They came and did uh, district improv festival in DC yeah. last year, mm-hmm. last year or two years ago. They're uh, blowing yeah. up now. Yeah, they're huge. Well, Chris well Red deserves. got on uh, on SNL, mm-hmm. so but even though the rest of them, uh, they're doing like sketch stuff. videos for Comedy Central and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Dwayne's on the break with Michelle. Did you see his Beyonce? Thing? No, no, I didn't see. Oh, that. that's great. Uh, yeah, he like came on as Beyonce. Nice. And she was like being chasing. It was funny. <laughs> yeah. No, they're all doing great <laughs> stuff now. I but I want them to come back to Chicago and do improv. Yeah. Are they are they fully dissolved now? Like, are they still? Are what, they still going? Repeat? Yeah. Yeah, they're still going because they're on um, uh, Bentwood Fest for oh, I.O. They're, they're on the lineup for that. I yeah. just assumed they were all like busy now doing their own well, thing. Well, I think it's the same thing everybody thinks like for TJ and Dave that they because yeah. they haven't done a show in a while. They're also on Bentwood them. Fest. They're on the, on the lineup for that. Oh, so. great. Uh, so there, there's a bunch that'll be, that's sometime in August, I think, is okay. the is show date. Is that, that here in Chicago? It's IO's, uh, uh, like, oh, um, I'm such festival. a sham. I don't know anything no, about no, it's the brand Chicago new. Like, there, there are people oh, okay. that know IO and don't know that that's a thing. Okay. But it's, I think Great. it's brand new for them. I think this is the first year they've done it. Okay. Uh, but it, it's their own improv festival, which is partly, I think, because Chicago, the Chicago Improv Festival is, like, going to every other year. Oh. And I so don't there's even not know one what that this is. year. Yeah. I, I am horrible. I don't know anything about anything in this because you don't like improv. We we discussed this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I like so good that improv. I think I'd like watching TJ and Dave. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're I like great. Th- I like three Pete. Have you I seen Improvised Shakespeare? No, but th- I've heard that's good. That's excellent. So that if it, if somebody says it's good improv, I will watch it. Uh, I just will not go to another guy I'm dating's improv show and oof. watch them <laughs> struggle. <laughs> Cause uh, it's embarrassing. You, need, you <laughs> need, yeah, no, 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 no. That uh, they did a Broad City episode of, uh, like that. Yeah. that they went to some some improv show. And it was yeah. just complete shit. I just can't do it anymore. If but somebody asks me to go to their improv show, I'm not declining. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I, you know what? I'm, I'm going I might to get you to a, su- to a Superhuman show. Superhuman okay. is excellent. Okay. Uh, I've I've been that. like four of their shows, and every single one was one of the best sh- improv shows I've ever okay. seen. If They're somebody says it's good, I will go. They are great. They are great. There was an improv show I left once. Yeah, like well, I've the left a couple of them, yes. I was like, because it's like secondhand embarrassment. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I don't, uh, there's a certain point where you don't want to be in the room with them while this is going on. Yeah. Like, you feel so bad for them. And I'm sure people get secondhand embarrassment just being around me. So I understand. <laughs> like, it's fine. And that's fine. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Well, so. Um, you, you we started answering what you wanted to do with this, oh, and it yeah. became how much you dislike improv. But Oops. what what's the uh, what's the what's the end goal with this? 
um with tassels probably film festivals uh with the this whole thing like everything yeah uh i w- write and direct movies yeah that's kind of the goal and tv you know if i can mm-hmm. um yeah but it's a pretty simple goal yeah that's it <laughs> pretty simple goal but, right and direct know, everybody manages maybe to produce uh, eventually yeah once i am you know have more stuff going on but not like actively produce like be a creative producer like throw money and stuff <laughs> I'm not about to line produce. produce. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, like maybe eventually produce. Yeah. Uh, that's, I don't have as much interest in that. I think that's something that people like start doing and I'm like, really? They, they're they a producer now? Yeah. But, you know. There's a few people here that I, producing is one of those things that it never heavily appealed to me, but I've come yeah. here and found there's, there's a few people here that are like, yeah, I want to produce stuff. Yeah. Which is like, cool. I want to support somebody else's vision. And I'm I like, couldn't okay. do that. Like I, I, I'm too selfish. I feel like I could do it on the creative end, but not necessarily on like the like same the organizational, the, you know, gosh, no. functional end. I can't like put away my own laundry. I can't organize a movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Although I've been pretty organized with tassels. I'll say that. Yeah. I'm pr- pretty proud of myself. <laughs> I was surprised and it's, shocked. It, it, it's a lot. You're doing five, six shooting days. Yeah, it'll be six. Most of these projects are one to three shooting days and yeah. so you you all are well beyond that and you're but taking the time with the shots that you're getting yeah versus a lot of those are trying to cram in really probably more days worth of stuff into less time to yeah. keep the cost lower you all are you're taking your time but you're also going to locations that you can get for free and mm-hmm. and you know well we're also like focusing a lot on production design as well right. like we dress the entire backstage of the demont to like right. look fancy like i just had I'm crazy. That's the problem. That's I this not whole crazy. Look, that is. I had this whole lookbook. I was like, I want this to like feel like this. And can we do that, Juan? And he was like, Yeah, well, we could do that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that was a very good Juan impression for just, anyone that does yeah. not met Juan your DP. <laughs> oh, what is what does he say? But uh, it's so funny. I don't know. I did an impression of him in front of Bria the other day, and she was like, That's crazy. Yeah. Um. Oh, he'll be like, oh, that's fucking funny, dude. He'll be like, he'll be like oh, that's so funny. He's like, he doesn't laugh. Guy. He just says like, oh, that's funny as shit. He just smiles and says something's funny. That's how you know yeah. he's, he's enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. That's well, funny. Well, uh, kind of tying this up. So uh, if people wanted to try and track you down on social media, follow well, you. Are we done? Is this the end? I, I mean, we, we've gone for, for like long? 50 minutes. So. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, shit. We, we, tore, flies. we tore up some time here, uh, you know, we, uh, but uh, do people want to follow me on Twitter? or Instagram? You don't want that. Sure, they do. All You're right. entertaining. All this right. was fun. OK, that's how we managed to blow through 50 minutes. I've done that's some of these true. that go much, much shorter. Oh, really? Hey, we could go longer <laughs> if you want. And then you could cut it down and get the really good stuff, because I feel like half of this was bad. You no, can cut out the bullshit. whole thing where I say I don't like improv. <laughs> no, I'm leaving all of that. That is no. that is one of my favorite parts of this episode. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, what is my Instagram? I don't remember. Uh, this one is at Bethany Hemberg. So nice. M is my middle name. <laughs> M for magic. Magic. No, Margaret. <sighs> I couldn't lie. <laughs> It's you, Margaret. You had a good lie. Oh, I had such a good lie. Would people, people believe that? Sure. Bethany Magicburg. They wouldn't have. But I mean, they, we, we could say they would have. No, you know, there's a funny story about my name. It's not actually that funny. Um, but Margaret, so Bethany means house of sorrow. Okay. Which I think is apropos. I'm a miserable person. <laughs> and um, my mom found that out. She liked the name Bethany and then she found it in Mount House of Sorrow and she was like, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we can do that. And then she made my middle name Margaret, which means pearl. And she was like, oh, well, she's a pearl in a house of sorrow, which is still a dig on our house. Like, yeah. it still means that my family is a bunch of like sad sacks. And I'm like, <laughs> the only you're the one supposed one. non sad sack. And you, good you, one. you said yourself, you're a sad sack. I'm a sad sack. I'm sad. Um, no, that's. <laughs> Total it's absolutely true. Failure of naming. Uh, what else do it? What else do people follow people on? Uh, um, I mean, is is are your movies up any place where people can find them? I have a website. I don't want to give people that. It's bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, the last thing that. I looked up was stomach pain caffeine because I think I'm getting an ulcer. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. On, and on that note, <laughs> I, I'm on Facebook as Bethany Berg. 
Nice. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all I have. <laughs> you can stop with that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't want. I don't I'm want on people Pinterest to follow is. Me. I don't think. Am I on Pinterest? I think I I'm on know. Pinterest. I think I have everything. I just don't use. I think it every, yeah. Everybody's. Everybody everybody's has got a Pinterest. Else. Everybody's pitting. They're all making their wedding boards. Tony's guy five. For e- for each um, <laughs> for what for guy like, five is that what no, you no you've got five wedding boards oh got five I thought you've you said got I'm, five I thought you were plugging me as no. guy five on Pinterest no no, no. you've got <laughs> five wedding guy five boards. on Pinterest and let us know who that is because one it's not for me. a summer wedding one for a spring wedding one for fall <laughs> winter wedding and then one for a fun wedding like if you have a lot of money yeah. it's one day in life <laughs> I'm just well, saying the number of wedding boards I have They're, it's five. This has been fun. It's been a good time. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Thank you. That was Bethany Berg. Thank you to Bethany and to the Harold Ramis Film School and the Second City staff for their help. The song on this week's episode was I Wished I Was Dead by the Great Heights Band off their new album Rad Pop, available now on iTunes and Google Play. The show is recorded and edited by me, Tony Lazzaroni. If you want to hear more from me and my classmates, teachers, and a few special guests, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions or comments, send us an email at filmstudentpod at gmail.com or find us on Twitter and Instagram at filmstudentpod. And be sure to check out some of my and my classmates' work on filmstudentpod.com. See you all next week. Class dismissed. Class dismissed.